heavy rain was pouring down. Walter had hurriedly left the house, pulling his leather jacket over his head as he tried to catch the train. His steps slowed under the weight of the rain. Suddenly, his foot caught in a pothole, causing him to lose his balance and fall to the ground. Covered in mud, he got up and started running again. As the train's whistles blew, he made a final sprint to reach the station. Soaking wet, he pulled his ticket out of his pocket and showed it to the train conductor. The conductor gave him a brief look and validated the ticket. Walter sighed and stepped onto the train, collapsing into one of the empty seats. Outside, the rain was so heavy that the sky was covered with dark clouds, and the howling wind echoed through the train station. Raindrops hit the train windows hard, creating a sound like a small drum orchestra. Walter ran through puddles as he headed towards the train, his shoes filling with water. His leather jacket had long since ceased to be protective, losing its waterproof quality. With his pants covered in mud and his hair soaked, he was in a rather disheveled state. Out of breath, his eyes squinted against the rain. The inside of the train was even gloomier than the storm outside. Old, dim yellow lamps flickered intermittently, their light almost extinguished. The seats were hard and uncomfortable, their fabric worn and torn in places. There was a palpable unease in the air. Some passengers sat quietly, while others glanced around suspiciously. There was an expression of apprehension on everyone's face. As Walter stepped onto the train, he was greeted by the cold and damp air. He threw himself into an empty seat, trying to relax for a moment, but the surrounding gloom made it difficult. The train started moving. Walter pulled a handkerchief from his backpack and tried to wipe the mud off his pants. The noise of the rain still echoed in his ears, but the heavy silence inside took over. Just then, a loud crash was heard from one of the forward carriages. The crash was sudden, as if something had toppled over with great force. Through the small glass door, people craned their necks towards the other carriage, trying to figure out what had happened. The anxiety in their eyes made everyone's hearts race. Yet no one moved. They seemed glued to their seats. It was just a momentary sound, and when no one saw anything, they turned back to their business. There weren't many people in the carriage, so they soon returned to their silence. Walter continued to clean his pants with the handkerchief. The more it got wet, the more the mud spread, but he kept at it. He was curious about the noise, but couldn't muster the courage to get up and look. The train swayed with the rhythmic clattering of the tracks. These sounds, combined with the howling of the storm outside, created an even more eerie atmosphere. Walter gave up on cleaning the mud and tried to distract himself by searching for his headphones in his bag. After tossing the wet handkerchief aside, he fumbled through the small compartments inside his bag. Despite trying to keep everything organized, it took him a while to find them. Finally, he found the headphones. He untangled the wires from the rest of his belongings. When he reached into his pocket to plug them into his phone, he realized he had forgotten his phone at home. This realization further frustrated him. It seemed like all the mishaps were happening one after another. A brief expression of disappointment crossed his face. Then he dropped his shoulders and put his hand back in his pocket. Resting his head against the window again, he watched the rapidly passing scenery outside. Walter was lost in the rhythmic clattering of the train and the sound of the rain outside. Resting his head against the window, he hoped to find some comfort. However, the anxiety and unease inside him continued to flow like raindrops in his mind. As Walter gazed out the window, his thoughts drifted back to years ago, to his family in Scotland. The fierce argument with his brother Alex still lingered vividly in his mind. It had all started after their father's death when they had disagreed over the management of the family farm. Alex had wanted to sell the farm as he planned to build a life in the big city. However, Walter had wanted to preserve the farm for the memories and significance it held for their family. After prolonged arguments, Walter had left in anger and moved to England. Since then, he had hardly spoken to his brother. Now, their mother was on her deathbed, and his family had urgently called him back to Scotland. As Walter got lost in these thoughts amidst the rhythmic clattering of the train, he wondered what it would be like to face Alex again. 
confronting his brother would bring to the surface years of suppressed emotions and regrets. He didn't know what kind of reception to expect from Alex. Was there hope for forgiveness, or would old quarrels reignite? Walter also wondered what his mother might want from him. During their last conversations, she had been deeply affected by the rift between her sons and had tried to reconcile them. Perhaps now, her final wish was for her sons to make peace. This thought brought a slight warmth to Walter's heart but also made him feel a tremendous pressure. Could he fulfill his mother's last wish? As he grappled with these thoughts, the movement of the train and the sound of the rain continued to echo in his mind. The voice of the train conductor snapped Walter out of his thoughts and back to reality. Ticket, sir. May I see your ticket? The conductor asked. Walter reached into his jacket pocket, pulled out his ticket, and handed it to the conductor. After checking it, the conductor moved on to the rear carriages. Walter soon noticed the train arriving at its first stop. A few passengers quietly got up and left the train, while Walter remained in his seat. With the departure of the other passengers, the carriage nearly emptied, leaving Walter alone. As the train started moving again, the feeling of loneliness deepened. A few minutes passed, feeling like an eternity to him. Suddenly, a noise from the rear carriages startled him. Shortly after, the doors opened again as the train arrived at the second stop. However, no one boarded at this stop. Walter remained alone, enveloped in the silence of his solitude. The sound of the rain outside, combined with the silence inside the train, created an eerie atmosphere. As the train moved forward, a man entered from the front carriage. He was a giant of a man, with a bald head and tattoos covering his face, giving him a menacing appearance. By his side was a dog, just as ugly and intimidating as he was. The man walked heavily down the aisle, sat down on a seat, and gave Walter a sideways glance. The dog, too, fixed its eyes on Walter, growling in a threatening manner. Walter felt uneasy with the presence of this new passenger. The man and his dog's stares made him uncomfortable. He took a deep breath and pulled his headphones out of his bag again. He pretended to listen to music, placing the headphones in his ears and looked out the window. In reality, he wasn't listening to anything. It was just an excuse to escape the unsettling situation. As he watched the raindrops streaming down the window, his anxiety deepened. The dangerous appearance of the new passenger and his growling dog only added to the uneasy atmosphere inside the train. Walter knew he wasn't alone on his journey to Scotland, but he sensed that this traveling companion wasn't friendly. After a while, the train approached another stop. Walter glanced sideways to see if the man would get off. However, the man remained in his seat, still accompanied by his dog. Walter, trying to cope with the tension inside him, watched as the train stopped and then started moving again. With each stop, he knew he was one step closer to the end of this tense journey. But until that moment came, he had to find a way to deal with the danger before him. The rhythmic clattering of the train and the relentless sound of the rain outside seemed to blend with the growls of the dog, creating a symphony of unease. Walter tightened his grip on his bag, his mind racing with possible scenarios and solutions. He couldn't shake the feeling that the man and his dog were more than just random passengers, and that their presence was a harbinger of something ominous. Walter continued to pretend to listen to music, gazing out the window. Despite the train's movement, he could feel the man's eyes on him. Summoning his courage, he glanced at the man and saw that his gaze hadn't wavered. The dog growled intermittently, adding to the tension. Walter, trying to mask his discomfort, averted his eyes and resumed staring out the window. However, the man ignored Walter's lack of reaction, stood up, and walked heavily towards him, the dog trailing behind. The man sat down in the seat next to Walter and, in a harsh voice, said, Take out your earphones, I'm talking to you. Swallowing hard, Walter removed his earphones. Is there a problem? He asked, his voice trembling. The man grinned and shook his head. Just curious what someone like you is doing here, he said. Alone, quiet, are you hiding something? Walter didn't know how to respond to the threatening question. I'm just on my way to visit my family, 
he said, trying to remain calm. But the man's stare and the dog's growling only made him more uneasy. The man leaned closer. What are you hiding in your bag? Show me, he demanded. Walter froze. The dog, now closer, bared its teeth and growled louder. Slowly, Walter reached for his bag, but the man was quicker. He snatched the bag and began rummaging through its contents. Walter tried to stop him, but the dog lunged at him. Walter recoiled, pressing against the seat's edge. The train conductor noticed the commotion and intervened. What are you doing? Stop immediately, he shouted. But the man, unfazed, retorted, shut up and mind your own business. Ignoring the threat, the conductor moved determinately towards the man and pushed him away from Walter. The man stumbled back but quickly regained his balance. Meanwhile, the dog attacked the conductor, sinking its teeth into his arm. The conductor groaned in pain as the man pulled a knife from his pocket, which glinted briefly before plunging into the conductor's chest. Blood quickly stained his uniform. The carriage plunged into chaos. As the conductor collapsed, Walter watched in horror, holding his breath. With the carriage nearly empty, only their echoing voices and the dog's growls filled the space. The man turned back to Walter. Walter's mind raced, searching for an escape. He leapt from his seat and ran towards the rear carriages. His heart pounded as he heard the heavy footsteps and the dog's claws behind him. Fueled by adrenaline, he ran faster. He opened the door to the rear carriage, entered, and shut it behind him. But this was only a temporary refuge. The sound of the man's fists pounding on the door reverberated through the metal. Walter continued down the narrow corridor of the train. As the conductor writhed on the floor, struggling for his life, Walter felt the train's relentless motion and planned his next move. His chest heaved as he considered pulling the emergency brake. But he knew that could further enrage the man and make the situation even more dangerous. Walter moved through the narrowing corridor, searching for a hiding place while avoiding the man's grasp. The heavy, threatening footsteps echoed on the metal floor. Walter tried to regulate his breathing as he moved deeper into the train. Finally, he found a small space at the back of the train and hid there. His heartbeat echoed in his ears as he waited in silence. But the silence was brief. The man's and the dog's footsteps grew louder. Walter held his breath in the dark, cramped space. Despite his fears and anxieties, he knew he had to stay strong to survive. While trying to steady his breathing in the narrow space at the back of the train, Walter formulated a plan. The footsteps of the man and his dog were drawing closer. He knew he needed to think clearly and avoid panic. Groping in the dark, he located the emergency brake. He could use it to distract the man and his dog. As the footsteps echoed in the train's narrow corridor, Walter quickly pulled the emergency brake. The train jolted to a stop, momentarily throwing off the man and his dog. Seizing the opportunity, Walter rushed toward the next carriage. When the train halted, the doors opened, and Walter jumped out into the rain. The downpour was still heavy, the sky covered with dark clouds. Walter began to run as soon as he exited the train, but the man and his dog were close behind. The sound of their footsteps mixed with the rain and wind, heightening the tension. Walter was careful not to slip on the wet ground, but he could feel the man's and the dog's breath on his neck. As he ran alongside the tracks, Walter saw the train heading into a tunnel up ahead. He sprinted towards the tunnel, hoping the darkness would throw off the dog. Entering the tunnel, he quickened his pace, searching for an escape in the deepening darkness. The dog became more aggressive in the dark, and Walter knew he had to come up with a plan. At the end of the tunnel, he noticed a small door next to the train. He rushed towards it, opened it, and stepped inside. It was one of the train's maintenance rooms. Walter hoped he could find something here to stop the man and his dog. His eyes scanned the shelves rapidly, and he found a rope. He thought he could use it to trap the dog in the restroom. After closing the door behind him, Walter waited for the man and his dog to approach. When the footsteps grew nearer, he gripped the rope tightly. As the dog neared the door, Walter made a swift move, slipping the rope around the dog's neck and pulling it towards the restroom. 
He quickly shoved the dog inside and locked the door from the outside. The dog barked and scratched at the door, but it was trapped. However, the man was now more enraged. As Walter faced him, he saw the distance between them rapidly closing. The man's eyes were filled with anger and menace, increasing Walter's anxiety. But Walter was determined not to give up. He decided to use the tools in the maintenance room to fight back. Walter grabbed a heavy metal rod from the shelves and swung it at the man. The man, caught off guard, received a hard blow to his arm and staggered back in pain. But it wasn't enough to stop him. He attacked again with renewed fury. As Walter prepared to swing the rod once more, the man rushed forward and grabbed it from his hands, leaving Walter defenseless. Holding the rod, the man approached Walter. Desperately, Walter noticed another tool on the floor, a sharp screwdriver. He quickly grabbed it and lunged at the man, stabbing him in the leg. The man screamed in pain and collapsed to the ground. This gave Walter a chance to escape. Walter swiftly exited the maintenance room and ran towards the emergency exit of the train. Leaving the man's pained groans behind, he managed to get outside the train. The rain was still pouring heavily, but this time he was running towards freedom. Despite his pain, the man was still determined to catch Walter. He crawled and shouted, continuing his pursuit. As Walter moved along the tracks, he headed towards the forest. The sounds of the man's footsteps merged with the rain as Walter searched for a hiding place in the forest's depths. Moving swiftly through the trees, the rustling leaves and the howling wind enveloped him. Finally, Walter reached the edge of a cliff. Below, a river flowed rapidly. Hearing the man's footsteps closing in, Walter knew there was no turning back. The man, despite his injured leg, approached Walter, eyes burning with rage and hatred. Walter realized he had to make one last move to rid himself of this threat. As the man reached him, Walter lunged forward, pushing him towards the edge. The man lost his balance and tumbled down the cliff, his screams fading into the sound of the river. Walter stood at the edge, breathless. The man's screams and the sound of the river soon faded into silence. He was finally free from danger. Exhausted and drenched, Walter made his way back through the forest and towards the train. When he reboard the train, his only thought was of his family. As the train started moving again, Walter looked out the window, feeling the relief of leaving this perilous journey behind and knowing he would finally reunite with his loved ones. The train continued its journey, taking Walter closer to his destination and his family.